start off with um, the English sermon first, and then I'll translate into Thai afterwards, okay? So, today I want to tell you a cumulative story. Basically, it's a story of the Buddha, again. But, what I want to tell you about is the point. There's a main point that happens in all of the Buddha's teachings. A lot of Thai people think that Buddhism is all about samadhi, which means like concentration and tranquility and being quiet and peaceful. But it's not. A lot of Thai people think that Buddhism is all about having mindfulness, or in Thai they call it sati. But it's not. If we pay attention to the actual Buddha's life, and the life of his great famous students, we'll notice something. The Buddha was somebody who you couldn't trick. You can't trick the Buddha. Many, many people try to trick the Buddha, but you can't. For example, the other day I told you about the girl named Tim Jaya. Remember the story about the fake pregnant woman? Mm -hmm. Yeah? There was somebody who pretended to be pregnant to make the monks look bad, pretended to be the Buddha's girlfriend, and pretend to have a pregnant stomach. And then the Buddha, you can't trick him. He stayed quiet. And he said, only you and I know the truth. And in the end, the fake stomach fell out and everyone found out that she was lying. And she got beat up by the whole group and then later on she got the earth swallowed her whole. That was only one situation. There was another situation where uh, the Buddha's cousin, his name was Prateotat. Prateotat was the the evil guy. That's what everyone calls him, the evil guy. He wanted to take over Buddhism. The Buddha said that the Buddha will stay a Buddha as long as they have the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, which means the Buddha person, the teachings, and his students. Once everything is set up, you have the monks and the nuns, the lay people guys and the lay people girls, then the Buddha will stop. However, his cousin said, hey look, you have the monks and the, guy, and the girls, like the lay people and the lay women, so you should stop. Let me be the new leader. Let me be the new leader of the, the, the Sangha, the monks. And also, I want to set new rules. I want to make it so that monks have to live in the forest only. I want to make it so that monks only have three robes only, and that monks have to all be vegetarians. And the Buddha says, hold on, Teotan, hold on. Don't think like that yet. It's not time. Even this guy tried to trick the Buddha into letting him be the leader, but he couldn't. Then you look at all the different stories from his followers, such as Prasariputta and Patmokalana. Remember the story about Patmokalana, where I told you that he, the, the evil devil, the Mara, came and like went into his stomach and then tried to hurt him? And he says, hey, I know who you are. You're the devil. Get out of me. And he said, how did you know? He says, because I used to be the leader of the devil, so I know. In all of these cases, and there's so many more stories, but in all of these cases, the main point is that Buddhism is not about being peaceful and quiet. Buddhism is about being smart. We're not a religion of quiet, peaceful, like passive people who run away from fights and are scared of everyone. Buddhism is about being smart. So now, there's many things in this world that are designed to trick you. They're, they're created just to trick you. There's a YouTube video out there that I would recommend you guys go and see. It's called Dove Pure Beauty. Now, in this clip, what they do is they take this average, normal-looking woman, very normal. They take a picture of her, and she doesn't look pretty, doesn't look ugly, just very normal. Then, they start to put some makeup on her. Then they start to change her face with Photoshop. They paint her eyes smaller, bigger cheeks, pulls up the neck, puts, takes away some fat, changes the color, and all of a sudden, she is a glamorous supermodel on top of a billboard. But when you look at the original person, and the person on the billboard looks like two completely different people. Also, when you watch movies, or even when you read comic books, for example, who's one of the most famous comic book superheroes? Superman. Superman. Think Spider -Man. about Spider-Man. Think about these stories. We hear about them and we get so excited. How cool would it be to fly? How cool would it, would it be to like fight, fight evil and be a superhero? It sounds like it would be really, really cool. This is exactly how the world tricks you. Now imagine, when you read the Spider-Man comics or when you watch the movie, did you ever notice how he's always having to hide? 
He's always hiding. He's scared people are going to know his real identity. He's scared that people are going to hurt his aunt May. He's always sad that his uncle Ben died because of him. We look at him and he's so cool, but what about him? Spider-Man's not a happy guy. He doesn't have a girlfriend all the time, right? He's always fighting bad guys. And instead of people saying thank you, what do they say? You're a menace to society. Superman, the same thing. He has no friends. No, he has no real friends. Superhero friends. But that's, that comes later. But even superhero friends, they don't hang out, they don't go to dinner together, they don't watch movies together. That's not a fun life. So here's what I'm trying to say to you guys. When you watch movies, when you watch videos, when you listen to music, when you see things, don't let them trick you so easily. They design things to trick you. Just like when your parents want you to eat vegetables, what do they do? Sometimes they put it in something else that tastes good, or they give you like some delicious meat, but then some vegetables hidden inside, or they cut it really small and they put it in there. This is what happens when the world tries to trick you. So what I'm saying is, as a Buddhist, our job is to be smart. When you look at things, look at it all the way. Don't just see what they want you to see. See what is actually there. See the good side and the bad side. If you can learn to see the good side and the bad side of everything, that's when you are truly a Buddha student. Because that's what the Buddha did. That's what all of his students did, was they were all smart. They weren't all meditation people. They weren't all chanting and, and all the stuff that we think. But what Buddhists are, are smart people. So I hope that we can all learn to be smart people. I'm going to translate this in